That's your reward. You got seen. But that's all. He didn't, get, he didn't hear any of it. Hello? Because you're praying so they hear you. So you talk about heart motive. So in this case, Jesus is saying, let's come and enter your closet and shut thy door. That where your father sees in secret. In other words, don't do it so be, to be seen. He goes, and your father, listen here, your father which sees in secret shall reward you openly. He does not intend for you to be being filled with the Spirit, stay continues to be being filled with the Spirit, and then not let it out where it's going to affect other people's lives. In other words, whatever you do privately in your prayer life is going to come out. It is going to be known because there's going to be manifestations and demonstrations of the Spirit in some form that's going to affect other people's lives. Amen? Amen. Don't you want to be a full vessel of God? Don't you want to uh, live out of the overflow? Hmm? You know, it's better to live off the overflow than to live off fumes. The tank's so empty, there's fumes. And it's really bad when there ain't even any fumes. You have a little light, a little match, and a little poof. And that's all all you're going to get. Hello? Take glory. glory. All right. So as he talked about, this is how God is going to bring. So, so the Lord wants you to walk in rest. God wants you to walk and live a life of refreshing. Amen. Refreshing that comes from the presence of God. Well, I wish I had more of the presence of God in my life. I've heard people say that. I go, well, why why don't you just go on in? (laughs) Hello? He's there. He's waiting. He said, come boldly before the throne of grace. Come on in. I've been praying for Jesus to manifest himself to me. Well, you know what? He said, manifest yourself to him first. He already came once. And he brought us the Father. He brought us the Holy Ghost. You have him. That's it. The Lord stirred me up one day years ago. And I was saying, manifest, you know, manifest yourself, God. Manifest yourself to me. Manifest, manifest. And then all of a sudden he spoke to me. He goes, why don't you just manifest yourself to me? Hello? Hello? I know there's there's a scripture there. I believe it's in John where Jesus talked about I and the Father will come and we will manifest yourself. Amen. We'll make ourselves known to you. That's wonderful. Amen. But don't we have another passage over there and I believe it is the book of James where he says if you draw near to me. Well, if you'll manifest yourself to me, I will manifest myself to you. And he can't lie. Glory. I know what he's talking about there. I have had encounters in the public in places I didn't expect. I knew that passage and on, on that, Lord, I'm just manifesting my, in fact, I had prayed and said, Lord, you know, I've really spent a lot of time. I've been coming to you so much. And I, I'm having a wonderful time in, 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 in you know, I'm ed, get edified and, and built up, you know, and encouraged in my spirit. But didn't you say that if I drew near to you, you would draw near to me? And I don't feel like your end of the deal is happening. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I expect more. That's what I'm trying to say. I expected more. You know? No answer. I prayed again. I said, now, Lord, you know, I've been here hanging out with you for three hours, worshiping you, praising you with the Holy Ghost. I've been doing that for like six weeks, seven weeks, you know. I expected more. I'm a little disappointed. You said if I draw near to you, you'd draw near to me. 
Guess what he said? Nothing. I got no comment, no nothing. I go, are you, hello? Are you there? <laughs> I knew he was there. And don't misunderstand me. I was experiencing the Lord down in my spirit, but I just, you know, felt like there was just something, felt like there's a, a no whole nother level of him drawing near. You know what I mean? And I, at this time, I had a contract with a big apartment complex and I painted all their, their turnovers, you know. And one day I was there in the hallway and I had the, my roller and I was doing my, this job. This is back in the 80s. And this maintenance guy that worked on the compound, he came walking in and he decided to come in. He stood in the living room there and, and I was in the hallway and started talking to me about it. I don't even know what he was talking to me about. And I don't think we talked for five minutes. And all of a sudden, I mean, say suddenly, come on, help me. Suddenly, suddenly, that which I was talking to God about, I thought you said you would draw near to me. He decided to make good on it. And he didn't give me a time or a day or a location or anything. And I'm standing there in the hallway and all of a sudden this presence of God starts to come over me in such a tangible way, in a way I'm telling you folks, I could not stand it. It was so amazing. And here this is starting to happen while this guy's talking. And I'm thinking to myself, I wish he would leave. I was so caught up in what God was suddenly just doing around me, on me, in me, through me. I didn't think to go lay hands on the guy. He might have died if I would have. I don't know. It was so strong. It was so strong. And I started to say on the inside, what are you doing? Why? I, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm happy you're doing this, but now? <laughs> Oh, no, and the stronger it got, the more I said, please make this person leave so I can express myself. Because you just want to, you know. <sighs> Finally, the guy left. Oh, thank God. <laughs> and he left. And I took off down into the bedroom and I went, oh, God, what? <laughs> and he said, he says what he said to me. I told you that if you would draw near to me, I will draw near to you. But I never did tell you when I would do it, where I would do it. <laughs> how I would do it. I was so into <laughs> this tangible, heavy, thick. Say thick, man. Ooh, thick. I was in Mexico, same thing, just in pursuit. And I was ministering at a minister's conference. And um, my turn was coming up. The guy in front ahead of me, my turn to preach, Pastor Kenny Gatlin was there. And he was ministering too. He was going to minister after me. We've had Kenny here minister many times. And um, I just really, really was in, who. Hot pursuit of him. Mm, praise God. Just, you know, I have my daily fellowship, but I wasn't satisfied with that. I wanted, I just wanted more to receive more of him. He'd give me all of him, but I just wanted to take more. And I was taking it. And so, I uh, thought, well, this guy's really long-winded I think I probably got plenty of time. I think I'll go to the restroom. So I kind of eased on out of the meeting and went to, was going to the restroom. I was on my way going to the restroom. It was quite a walk to the back of the auditorium where it was. About halfway there, all of a sudden, imagine this. I want you to just imagine this right now. Imagine a swimming pool that's in front of you that's as high as you. That, but you're down, you're in it at the level of it, like in the deep end. And it's like glass or something like that, you know. It, I, you know it's, or whatever. So just imagine that. And you're walking along. How, how many of you ever walked in water? How many of you have walked on water? 
They have any water walkers, but have you walked in water? How many of y'all know what it feels like to walk in water? How many of you have, have you ever run in the water? How quickly are you able to move? And it takes a quite a bit of energy, actually, if you really think about it, right? Ha, ha, ha. This is another moment of drawing near. He said, you draw near me, I will draw near to you. I will manifest my, so I'm just walking along in this nice thin air right here. I'm walking along and all of a sudden I just, poosh, I walk into this wall of light just like water. And all of a sudden everything is like this. And it's like, oh my, what is this? Oh my. And all I can think about is if I go to the bathroom, I ain't making it back. I knew it. I got I just stepped into something and if that I felt my entire being like I was in walking in a river. That's how I just the whole feel I might not look that way to somebody else, but that's exactly how I felt. And I thought I have to get back to my chair. And I stopped I I, I changed my mission to go to the restroom and I turned around and I made it back to my chair. <laughs> and this guy is still preaching and I was so glad he was actually. And I, he's taking, now he's into my time, which when I do my time, it's going to, you know, if I do all of my time, then I'm going to get into Kenny Gatlin's time. So anyway, I sit down and, and, um, you know, uh, he's, he, he, Kenny whispered to me a few couple times before that. He says, he's going to take all of your time. I said, yeah, it's looking that way. And then he said, I sat down next to him and Kenny says, I think he's going to take the whole enchilada, brother. <laughs> We're in Mexico, so it fit. He goes, it looks like it, brother Kenny. He goes, but you get up there as soon, you know, I will. So I got up there and after, I don't know, I only preached for about 20 minutes. But the anointing was so heavy, so strong, so thick. When I gave an altar call, everybody in that room stood up and came forward. And I preached about the Spirit of God and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And there was a couple of guys that were in the government. One was a state senator, I guess, for that particular state. And other people that were public officials, you know. And you know what? I didn't, it was effortless, effortless. I just led them all in a prayer. I just went by and I just laid hands on them. And every single one of them just busted out in tongues, speaking in tongues. glory. I didn't have to coach them. I didn't have to tell them, do this. And, you know, I mean, open your mouth. Don't make the tongue. Holy Spirit, pull your tongue back and snap it back to make, you know, don't make, you know, don't bite down while you're, you know. I have to give all the instructions I give folks here in America, you know. Yield, yield, <laughs> yield. I just said, duh, duh, you know, just, and everyone went pow, 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 pow. That's so good. Glory to God. Pastor Kenny never did get to get up and do his message. <laughs> but we were all messed up. He walked away. He sure talked about it later. I've heard about it. Some of the things he said, oh, my God. He goes, the presence of God was so thick and strong. Well, man, I'll tell you what. It was just like this. I was walking. That's how I was going back to my chair. That's how I felt. It's so, so, so tangibly thick. God's presence. Oh, come on, work with me now. I wasn't a pastor when I was painting them apartments. I was an usher serving in a local church just like anybody else. I wasn't on staff. My experience is I got born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, went to Bible college, came back from Bible college, went to work in the local church, serving like anybody else, volunteering. See, a lot of times, the reason why I say that, because sometimes people go, well, that's because you're a pastor or something. No, it ain't nothing like that. It's because I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God, and I want to take more because he gave it all, and I want to take more and more and more and more and more. And so what is the goal of these teachings here? Oh, I 
want to hopefully inspire you to take more, make him a priority. Praise the Lord. If you have to do a blackout and go off the grid, you know, just as a, like a fast, sometimes you need to do that. You need to just cut, cut everything. Man, uh, uh, uh. God first. He number one. And what I mean, your flesh will scream and shout. Hello? But what is it going to take to prioritize your spiritual life? Make that a number one most important thing. I haven't even got to any of the other scriptures that I did have planned that weren't all the same from last week. I got some new ones, some good ones. I'm going to skip. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to skip all those other ones and go over to, here to, uh, let me see here. Go with me to Philippians. Praise the Lord. Philippians. We'll wrap this up. I think. I'm trying. Go to Philippians chapter 3, if you would. Philippians 3. I love this with Paul. How many of y'all know that Paul knew God? Huh? I believe he knew him. But I love his testimony. I love his heart, his passion for the Lord. Amen. Look at verse 7 of uh, chapter 3. It says, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet, yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of, Jesus, of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. And be, that I may gain, may gain Christ and what? And be found in him. If I come looking for you, where am I going to find you? Think about it. Where are you being found? Mm, come on, give me, give me an uh. Thank you. Where, where can you be found? Say there's therefore. therefore. Now, now, no condemnation. To those who are in Christ Jesus. I'm your pastor. I'm your shepherd. I'm going to lead you somewhere. You ask yourself the question. Challenge your own self. Where am I found? What's my priorities? Amen. I understand the busyness of life. And I understand responsibilities that we have. God understands that completely and totally. But did you know that he did make enough time in a day? Huh? The reason why you have microwaves and all this indoor plumbing, thank, say thank God, thank God for indoor plumbing. plumbing. See, so you don't have to go down in the river and get buckets of water to bring it to prepare. It takes you six hours to make lunch. Now you just pop it in the microwave. Why? Why did God give us that? So that we didn't have to spend so much time preparing the, these things to, to, to live. So that we could what? Give more time in his presence. Think about it. Your reason why you got texting and email? So you don't have to sit there and write some long old letter that may take you six hours to write because you got to get it right, you know. You want it to be perfect. Why? So that you could give more time in his presence. Instead of using all that time for that, email, now you don't have to run down to the post office. Just use that as an example. Praise the Lord. Why did God give us showers? I don't know. Well, I do know. Thank God for a man. Otherwise, we all be sitting here going, well, when are we getting out of here? It's starting to get hot in here and smelly, you know? Mm. So you can get words from God. How many of y'all have gotten revelation from God in the shower? Come on, man. I mean, he is giving you some stuff, huh? Praise the Lord, these conveniences. Amen. Do y'all remember the day back when, some of you will, some of you won't, where Saturday was bath day? Whether you needed it or not. <laughs> I do, I remember it. Some of you are looking at me funny, like, really? 
You take a shower every day and twice a day. Hello? Why do we have these conveniences? So we can have more time that we can give to him. Amen. He made life easier for us. All of these conveniences are not to make life more complicated, to fill our day up with more of everything else and not him. I hope you're still here. Okay, here we all Be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may, come on, help me, that I may know him. This is my desire, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already attained or, that, or not that I have already arrived. I haven't arrived. Paul's saying, I haven't arrived yet. Hey, amen. And I, your pastor, have not arrived yet. He says, or am I already perfected, but I do what? Help me. I press on. I press on. Come on now, we need to press. I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehend or to have arrived, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the high prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Come on now. My life and the reason why I live what I live, my purpose in living is to know him. I am not satisfied with where I am in Christ and in God. I want more and I'm going to keep pressing and I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep running and I'm going to keep be, stay in pursuit of him. And the context of that word there to press on to know him is speaking from a context of, context of being a persecutor after the one he wants to chase after and persecute. So what he's saying is this. He goes, when I was outside of Christ, I was in pursuit of the church and those who believed in Christ and I was aggressive and going after them and he was getting them thrown in jail. He says, but now I'm going to take that same drive and I'm going to pursue God. I'm going to go after him. I'm going like violently. That's how it's talking about. Like violently. I'm going. I'm not, go, I'm not going after this lightly. I'm not just going to have a casual co- walk with God. I'm not just going to show up at church just to be seen. Oh, no. I'm showing up at the throne of God. I'm going to be there. I'm going to fellowship with him. I pray in tongues more than you all. That's what Paul said. And he had more revelation than anybody else because he walked with God. He talked with God. He prayed. He worshiped. He knew his God. And the Bible says that they, come on, work with me. They that know their God shall do exploits. Ooh. Somebody recently, a good friend, had a diagnosis and uh, had to have surgery. It's a life-threatening thing in the ministry. It's interesting when you're faced with something like that, how you start thinking about certain things. You start seeing life differently. You start looking at what's more the most important thing in life. And in one of his statements, his postings, he said this, you know, in light of what was going on, in light of the risk that he could die from this. And he stated, the most important thing there is in life, period, is to know God and know Jesus and pursue him and make him the number one reason for living in life. I'm paraphrasing, but that was what the spirit of what he was saying was. Let's not wait Let's not wait until you are faced with a life and death situation to decide, you know what's really important? Come on. Now, I know, don't misunderstand me. This brother lives for God. He walks with God. But he all the more was convinced that that's the most important thing in life. 
Amen. And if he didn't come through, I could see why you would just, you know, hey, have some good parting advice. God gave me this revelation years ago when I preached a funeral for someone. He said, this person's been in my presence for seven days now. What do you think he would have to say if he was allowed to come back and talk to everybody about what's important on planet Earth? One day I was at this woman's deathbed. She was tears. She was just overwhelmed with tears. Just so disappointed with her own life. She'd been basically a good person her whole life. And she'd been a believer her whole life. But she knew she never, ever made God a priority and made growing in him and knowing him any kind of a priority. He he was last on the list of things to do in life. And now she's about ready to step over to the other side. I had to assure her of her salvation so she could know you're saved not because you prayed or sought God. You saved because you put your faith and trust in Jesus to save you. Amen. So by grace, sister, you're saved. She goes, but I'm so regretful because I know, I know I could have. I didn't. He was not important to me. Now he is because I'm dying. I'm going to leave. And now that I'm thinking about, she's real honest. I'm thinking about all this now. Mm. Can I challenge you? Don't wait. Just get on with God. Get on with God. You have this great baptism of the Holy Ghost and power and fire. And you can pray in your known language, but you can pray in other tongues and build yourselves up and be edified and position yourself for the gifts of the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God and the presence of God to come and manifest. Draw near to him and he will draw near to you. Glory to God. Amen. You'll have no lack of power. You'll have no lack of faith you he said this keep who who, who, mm, that's what he said (laughs) Mm, that's so much i want to say and i'm looking at the clock and so are you so stop don't be messing with me i'm gonna let you out before noon so anything are we gonna get out before yeah you're gonna get out before noon amen say glory. glory he will keep you in perfect peace Perfect peace, perfect assurance, perfect faith, strong, strong, whose mind is stayed on him. He is your priority in life. Glory to God, stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. Paul said, I press. We need to press more. Don't back off. That's what he's saying. I'm not backing away. I have a lot of life. I've lived a lot of life. I have a lot of experience. I have known him, but my desire more than anything else in life still is to even know him more and experience him more. In Jesus' name, amen. Drink from the water right now. It's flowing to you. Cause it's flowing to you And it's flowing to me It's Holy Ghost anointing And it's time to be free It's river flowing from the throne of God Drink from It's a mighty river flow.